Hey, hope everybody's doing really good on this uh, Friday uh, here towards the end of uh, August, going into September. Um, we got some good news back from the uh, from the machine shop. As you can see here, we got our block back. I thought I'd go over a few things, uh, what we do to the block to hopefully make it last. Um, and, uh, you know, it, like I said, this block will probably take about probably 80 pounds of boost. Um, and really RPM wise, we're right around that 6,000 RPM range. And uh, horsepower, we shoot for 1,500. That's kind of about where everybody's at in this class. But really, you think about it, that's only a 370 cubic inch engine that's, that's pushing out that many horsepower. So I'll go over some things we do to the block to hopefully uh, strengthen it, make it last a little longer. And uh, I'm kind of mad at myself here too. Uh, I bought some parts and in my organizing skills, now I can't find them. So now I'll probably be digging through everything all weekend looking for these two or these uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven little uh, aluminum inserts. So we'll start here as you can see. Uh, you see we added main studs to the uh, bottom of the block. Um, these main studs are actually, we went away from metric to the bigger uh, standard um, main studs here. Uh, they are long, and the reason they're long is because if we go over here, you see this big thick uh, piece of steel here. This is what they call a girdle. And what that does is that goes over every one of those bolts after you put on the main caps, which are right here. Um, and so in order to get that just right so everything's snug up, we have these shims right here. And each shim is machined specifically for each one of those caps. So when this goes down, on top of that motor, these them caps are flush with the with the with the rail. And what I mean by the rail is I mean by this part right here. There's a little bit of a gap here, but this is the this here is the pan rail. And so that steel plate ties all these bolt holes together on both sides, plus these here, and then we tighten this down to 150 foot pounds on these mains. In order to keep these caps, because what happens is these caps want to do this. When they're under extreme load and under extreme pressure, those caps, they call it cap walking. And what, by doing this, we're crunching everything down tight and then secured it to the outside of the block, which ties everything together, which gives you a, a lot better base. So another thing we do is you look down in here, I don't know if you can see very well, but you see down in here we have notched this block out further on both sides. So with the aluminum rods, the aluminum rods are a lot thicker than your standard cast rods that were in this um, motor. Uh, they're, they're actually the same same length, um, same bearing sizes, all that stuff, but the rods are just a lot thicker and a lot beefier. Um, there's quite a difference in it. I, I should have got one out for this video. Um, so that's where we're at there. There's a lot of grinding that goes on into that deal. Another thing about a Cummings is uh, the Cummings on the front of the motor, figure out which way is the front, here we go. So normally Cummings, um, when we talk cam bearings, they usually have this cam bearing in right here. And the rest of the bearings all the way through there, all the journals, they do not have bearings in them. Um, and they run, um, well the reason is, is they just figure it's steel, they just run steel on steel. It casts, like if you run steel cams, these are a must. These are a must if you run a steel cam. If you run a built steel cam, you cannot run cast to steel. You gotta have these bearings in them. But the reason we put the bearings all the way through the motor, plus it, what it does is, it, plus it gives you a, a better bearing surface. And we run a lot more spring pressure than a normal motor in order to keep the valves. So the, valve, the springs on the valves are a lot stiffer and so it wants to put more pressure on this cam as the valves are opening and closing and thus puts more pressure into the cam and it can push it into the side to where you might not have very good lubrication without these uh, bearings. You could be pushing it into the, into the casting and you could cause uh, a lot of wear and tear on your motor. So we chose to go ahead and have that done. Um, so on the underneath side, I'll just get you a quick shot underneath here. Oh, another thing we do is this block is filled completely full of hard block. Um, the hard block is a product that they use on engine blocks, and it fills up the entire water. Where all the water would have went, 
that block is going to be, that stuff is where the block. So that concrete took the place of the water. And so running methanol, you don't have to worry about water anyway because methanol burns cold and uh, it cools the motor. So as we get here on the underneath side, so what we do the underneath side, you can see the, the cement right there. So on the underneath side, you can see these grooves right here. So we want, we run what they call a uh, O-ring or C-ring or fire rings or whatever the heck you want to call them. And we insert metal rings into these here. The head gasket goes on the outside, on the outside of it. So when you push that, when you push the head gasket on it, that ring, that ring will give you more strength um, and just more in general, uh, it's just a better seal. So when you're running 80 pounds of boost, you're not trying to push the head gasket out. That ring's gonna take that abuse of that intake manifold pressure on this motor. This motor's bored out 40 over. That's about the max you can go on a 5.9 Cummins block. You can't go any bigger than that. Um, or if you're not, you get into some real uh, real uh, short sidewalls. Um, so this, this block was machined completely flat. So there's no imperfections in this block. It's built completely flat. Um, so that's kind of the stuff we do on the block here. Um, we do run an SFI harmonic balancer. The crankshaft did balance. The pistons are made by Aries. That goes in this thing. They're a lot different than a diesel piston because we're, we're changing it over to methanol. And so parts don't need to be as heavy. We're looking for light weight, um, lightweight parts. That's easier on the motor. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're at on the motor. Everything's ready to go here. If I could find them damn little inserts. So what I mean by inserts, so in a Cummins, you see these holes, there's three holes back here. So this hole here, one goes to the cam, one comes up from the oil passage, and these little holes right here, they squirt, they're squirters, and they squirt up in the top of the piston. So as after the oil goes through everything, it's pushing the oil up and shooting it up in the top of the motor. So when your piston's going up and down, you're getting lubrication in the underneath side of that piston. And they're actually called like piston coolers. Um, some people say on methanol, you can block them off and be all right. Um, they normally come from the factory as just little plastic inserts. They make billet, um, billet aluminum ones that you can put in. And that's what we bought. And like I said, I just got to find them because I know I bought them. They're here somewhere. So... So that's, uh, that's what it takes to handle the horsepower that we run through this little motor. As you see, the motor's not that big. Uh, not that big at all. Uh, and uh, there's just a lot of work that goes into it. The machine work on this thing, is, I mean, it's unreal the amount of machine work that we have to put into this thing just to get it to last a little, you know, get it to last. Um, you know, a lot of people go to the six, seven blocks um, on these because the six, seven blocks tend to be a little stronger um, and what they do on them is on the underneath side where you see them O-rings, what they'll actually do is they'll actually take a one inch thick steel plate and they'll, then they'll attach that plate to the top of the motor and then that plate and then they'll actually sleeve the motor to where this here does not have sleeves in it. This is a bore just like you would see in your common V8 where a lot of diesels they have what they call sleeves that they press in and by pressing them sleeves in if you heard, a, if you basically, if you heard a cylinder, it's, they're easy to replace. We can't, we don't have that option with the Cummins. Um, so we just, like I said, if you go to the six seven, you can put sleeves in it because their bore. I think I forget what their bore is starting out with, but for us to be legal at three three hundred seventy cubic inches, you got to sleeve it down anyway, in order to get your stroke right or get your bore right in a six seven motor. So um, that's kind of where we're at on the motor. Um, if I could find them damn little things, we'd be putting it together, but uh, but we'll get it going. We're not going to do it this year. Um, we're not going to get it going this year, but we'll have it re we'll have it in the tractor here as soon as I find them things and get it put together. Um, the bell housing, um, we got it all back from the certifier, and uh, what they do is these bell housing have to be sent back every three years, and when they come back, they got to have your name on them. They have this little SFI sticker that says when they expire, and then in here, this is a steel ring. This is like a blow ring. That ring is in here in case that clutch comes apart. And if that clutch comes apart, this ring will catch it and keep it from coming out of this uh, bell housing. 
Um, and so that's another safety device that's required um, for what we run. Now, if you run a regular tractor that has a cast rear end and a cast bell housing, you're required to put a bullet poop, um, a blanket. It's a thick Cavalier blanket that they wrap the bell housings around them to keep those, if that, that comes apart, it keeps everything trapped in that bell housing and it doesn't let the parts and cast pieces come out. Um, just to kind of give you an example here, this clutch disc, this here's the clutch flywheel. This clutch flywheel weighs 65 pounds. And then plus there's about another 30 to 40 pounds of parts that go in it for a clutch. So you got all that mass swinging in around there at let's say 6,000 RPMs or 4,500 RPMs on a, with a load on it. If that comes apart or want, something happens, they can, it can do a lot of damage, it can hurt a lot of people. Um, so we, we went, we're, you know, that's, that's the purpose of these bell housings or them blankets that you see wrapped around the uh, cast, middle of the cast tractors. Um, we're fortunate we can run a bell housing with this tractor. So we chose, we bought this bell housing with the, with the SCS transmission in order we can speed, thing, speed the transmission up in this thing, make it a little quicker. Um, because the, like I said, stock, stock road gear is not enough for us. We need to be, we need to be about 20, 30% faster than road gear. And then even now with the performance that, like I said, we've been in, at this two years and I bet you we're already a year behind, um, for what guys are getting out of these motors. Um, I will say that I think the alcohol is kind of a little bit handicapped right now. I don't think we got to figure out the diesel guys are passing us up. They're doing their homework. Um, they're getting stuff figured out. Uh, a lot of them are going to 410 cubic inch intercool intercooled motors. Um, that seems to be what's working really good in our class. They're creating a lot of horsepower with that motor. Um, so we've got to get some more horsepower out of these little aluminum, or out of these little Alki motors because we aren't keeping up. Um, there's some of the top running Alki motors in the nation right now, and they're second, third, fourth. I mean, you don't, you know, used to be you'd see them in the winter circle all the time, but now, now they're just they're kind of like everybody else, uh, running what you can, doing what you can do, and uh, and there's like some guys that are have got the best turbos money can buy and all this other stuff, and and it's still it's a struggle for us to keep up with these little 370 Alkin motors, but we'll keep working on it, and we'll we'll catch up someday. We just got to figure out different, um, maybe a different motor program. Um, different cam profiles uh, I've really thrown around I got an idea in the back of my mind I ain't going to share it on here um, what we might be able to try um, to get some more ponies out of this thing um, like I said I don't know I might try it towards the end of, ne the end of next year but it's completely legal what I'm wanting to do it's just I don't know if it'll work or not because methanol is a little different animal than um, than the diesel so I wish everybody a good summer here. Uh, catch these polls at the end of the summer. We'll be down at Guthrie Center, Iowa on September 2nd at 7 p.m. Uh, for a Heartland Pool. Come out, support us. It's a great little fair. You pay like, it's just a gate fee. Everything in the fair is free after you get in the gate except, of course, your food and drinks. But all the grandstand entertainment is free. And it's just a great little fair down there in Guthrie Center, Iowa. Uh, we'll have the truck down there uh, with the possibility, I don't know yet, there might be a red tractor in my trailer too, but we're still working out the details on that. I told the guy that owns it I'm a little hard on parts and I don't want to tear it up, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if we bring it or not. So if not, I will tell you that the blue truck will be down there making its last pass. We got a game plan for the motor, what we're going to do. Um, we're not, like I said, I've kind of expressed that in what done some other videos on what we're doing with that motor so we plan on we're going to stick with that i got my head combination that i want to run to be legal i think i got picked out the best heads possible for what i want to do um and if they choose to go another direction with the heads that's fine i'm still going to stick with what i'm going to do follow through with it save up my money get the heads i want i don't have to have special pistons for these heads and all this other stuff and we're going to have the i actually the where this block came from um, Deemer's performance over in Carroll, Iowa. They're going to probably do the motor of the truck. I already talked to the owner, and he's excited about seeing what he can get out of that little motor. Um, one thing that we have, uh, one thing that we have found out, and it's still just a lot of me reading and a lot of research. I talked to them guys over there that do a lot of dyno work. The SR20 heads, which we really can't run those, but they're like the latest and greatest uh, head by Brodex. It's a 20 degree angle, conventional headed. Uh, big block Chevy. 
One thing about that motor is with methanol, it does not like methanol. SR20 heads do not like methanol. Them guys have done enough dyno time over there on the SR20 heads. They're telling me that methanol does not work on those heads. You can go back to the race gas and get so much more horsepower out of them. And it's because the combustion chamber in them heads are so small that you're crunching so much air in there and methanol requires so much more fuel. You gotta realize we're burning twice as much fuel, if not more in a methanol motor. So that fuel has to have somewhere to go to compress. And then combustion chambers are so small, they're struggling to get, to get all the alcohol in there in order to get a good, to get a good bang and to get the motor to, to be happy and run right. So we're gonna stick with 24 degree heads um, we've got the heads picked out. I've already talked to the, the machine shop about what we wanted, and we'll get the right cam in this motor. We'll get it. We'll get the. We'll get new pistons in it with higher compression, and then we'll save up our money to buy those heads. Hopefully, harvest will be here soon, and uh, we'll get back to driving a semi, and be putting some money back in the account, and uh, in order to buy some of these some of these pretty parts. So. I wish everybody a good summer. I'm glad that you guys have followed me on my Facebook page. I just appreciate all the comments. Um, we're like, like I said, I'm a small, I'm just somebody living a dream. That's all we're doing. We're, I'm living a dream, doing what I enjoy to do. Um, granted, hurting parts can get frustrating at time, but I, it, it just makes me, it just, it, it, I tell you what, it takes your mind off everything when you're out of here, even when things aren't going bad, just, come out here work on stuff i got it the garage up here by the house now so i don't have to go clear out in the back air and if you need something i'm close to the house so i i just appreciate it i appreciate everybody i appreciate the my sponsors that helped me right club lambs hamill transportation dennis and terry murphy with murphy's meats i just appreciate them people so much for helping us live our dream granted it's probably not my wife's dream it's probably more like her nightmare um but like i said where are you going to spend your money at? In the bar, the casino, or here in the garage? So I'd rather spend my money in the garage. So otherwise, I did win some money at the casino last weekend. So, so that was a plus. So have a great summer. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you later.